In the world, where rice is consumed daily by around 3.5 billion people, rice is considered as one of the most important food staples. It is cultivated in more than 100 million hectares in Asia alone. After growing and harvesting the rice crop, what is left behind from the plant is what is known as the rice straw. The rice straw is the stems and leaves of the rice plant. It is a byproduct of rice production. Ang ginagawa namin sa dayami, no? pag, mostly pag tagulan, kinakalat na lang namin sa bawat pilapil. Pinababiyaan namin mabulok kasi nagsusilbi din siyang, sabi nila, fertilizer daw. Sabi nila, neutralizer sa lupa. So, ganun ginagawa namin. Ngayon, pag summer, wala namang ulan, so matagal mabulok. Ginagawa namin, sinusunog namin siya. Which is, alam namin na bawal. Kaya lang, no choice kami kung paano i-mamalit yung dayami. So, ganun ang ginagawa namin, sinusunog. It's a very bulky material. You get a lot of it for every kilo of rice grain that you eat. You get a kilo or more of straw. Uh, but any movement of that straw is really shipping a lot of air around the place. So it's expensive and bulky to move. It's difficult to handle. It's time consuming to gather it. The problem with the yami, if you don't dispose of the good air, it's bad for the land. You need to remove it because you need to prepare it for the land. Kasi yung ibang farmers, gusto yung may-ari ng tubigan na ipakalat yung nag-aalaga ang ayaw nila kasi additional trabaho sa kanila yun. Kasi yung iba hindi daw sila binabayaran. Isa pang problema, nag-complain yung nagtatraktor ako kasi ang bagal nila mag-araro kasi sumasabit yung dayami. Especially kung hybrid yung tanim mo, tas yung dayami niya masyadong madami, eh sumasabit daw dun sa ano ng traktora, ng gulong. Kaya nahihirapan sila, mabagal sila ng trabaho. When rice straw is burnt, it causes environmental damage, greenhouse gas emissions, local air pollution. And that smoke also is breathed in by the farmers and the people in the rural communities that leads to respiratory illness. Rice straw is typically composed of 10 to 15 percent silica, making it very difficult to chop. Machines that collect and compress rice straw into bales are still in development for small-scale farmers. Handling rice straw is also especially difficult when it is wet. Solutions that are being developed for a dry season harvest may not necessarily work for a wet season harvest. Most rice is irrigated by flooding the fields with water. If farmers incorporate the rice straw then flood the field, methane is given off. Methane is a powerful greenhouse gas contributing to climate change. Where flooded rice crops are continually grown in succession, the lowest greenhouse gas emissions are achieved when all the straw is removed and the nutrients are recycled to the field. The Eri Supergen project seeks to better understand the barriers and potential solutions to handling rice straw. Methods to collect and use rice straw are being developed, though some of them are not what all farmers can readily implement yet. The good thing is that lessons can be learned from communities that collect rice straw. Innovative ideas that work are taken for testing and validation to further investigate rice straw's potential use for bioenergy. Siguro kung magkakaroon sana ng seminar tungkol dyan, pawiling kaming umatend, matutunan namin kung paano, baka maging sideline pa, extra income, alam mo na. What we're trying to do is to get a solid message across of what is possible, what is 
the benefit environmentally and economically? What are the trade-offs of different methods of, of handling rice straw? And particularly focusing on the energy. Uh, what are the technologies that can use this? What is the state of the art in demonstrating those technologies around Asia and internationally? And how can we work together to take that a step further towards uh, commercial implementation? Initial studies conducted by the project found a potential for using rice straw for energy. Activities around Asia that harness rice straw for energy are done on a small scale. Operations on a larger scale are being done for demonstration purposes only. But we are looking at, in particular, making biogas from rice straw uh, that can be a clean cooking fuel, used for making electricity, it can even be used as a, a, a fuel for vehicles and we're looking at how to maximize the yield of biogas and minimize the costs for producing that and that can mean multiple use of the straw before you use it for energy, maximizing the fertilizer value and um, maximizing return to the farmers through business models where they can benefit from it.